Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization 6 Wonder Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at Machu Picchu. And before we get into the video, I just want to let you know that yes, I am aware that in the thumbnail Machu Picchu is misspelled. I forgot a C, and I know on this, uh, this title screen here it is misspelled once again, I forgot the C, but... I don't have the Photoshop files in order to go back and change that, so I'm just going to leave it as is, <laughs> leave it as is and acknowledge it now. So before you put 12 million comments down below about how I missed the C, I'm aware. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into things with Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is a wonder that is added with the Gathering Storm DLC, and it unlocks with the engineering technology. This does make it a medieval era wonder. To get the Eureka for engineering, all you have to do is construct ancient walls in any city, so in, I'd say, probably about 8 out of 10 games, you're probably going to have at least one instance of ancient walls created before you reach engineering, so this is a technology that is very easy to get the Eureka for and very easy to boost. That being said, you typically won't be rushing for engineering, it still is just a little bit too late in the tree for that, but it is still early enough that you can focus your way towards it and get to Machu Picchu kinda fast, and that is something that you probably will want to do if you want to build this wonder, because it is a little bit difficult to build. Um, but that is how you unlock the uh, the building requirements for Machu Picchu. And speaking of the building requirements, in order to actually place it down, there is only one that you have to satisfy, and that's just you got to put it on a mountain. So any mountain tile in your empire is a valid tile for Machu Picchu. Uh, I believe this doesn't work if it's a volcano, though. Of course, I think I don't even know if they still technically qualify as mountain tiles. But obviously, just a plain mountain tile will be anything that will be a tile that is good for Machu Picchu. And as far as its production cost is concerned, much like with all of the other medieval era wonders, it has a production cost of 400, which is uh, equivalent to normally about 20 to 30 turns in most cases. Now, as far as the bonuses from Machu Picchu are concerned, they are fairly straightforward and simple. So for the first one, you're just going to get straight up plus four gold per turn. So plus four gold per turn, obviously it's pretty decent. It's not really that insane. I think a market gives plus two if I remember correctly. If not, I might just be going crazy, but plus four gold. It's decent. It'll stack up over, you know, on the large number of turns to give you a decent gold boost. So that part is at least good. Is plus four gold worth 400 production? Probably not, but the other bonus for Machu Picchu really is probably worth 400 production in certain cases. So the other bonus is that mountains will provide a standard adjacency bonus to commercial hub, theater square, and industrial zone districts. So standard adjacency means plus one, so effectively all of your commercial hub, theater square, and industrial zones will receive plus one adjacency from each adjacent mountain tile. This can be really insane depending on the spawn that you have. If you happen to be right next to, you know, a, a continent split where there's lots of mountains that are there, or maybe you're playing the Inca or something like that that have a really strong mountain start, uh, mountain spawn, Jeez, English. Mountain spawn bias, then this can be really good because you can get some insanely high yield commercial hubs, uh, insanely high yield theater squares. Um, I find this to be most impactful on theater squares just because they are generally the hardest uh, districts to get adjacency bonuses on. But industrial zones as well, if you can plan out some good aqueducts or dams along with mountains, you can get some insanely high adjacency uh, industrial zones, which obviously will then get you some insanely high adjacency, you know, factories and uh, coal plants. Well, I, don't, I can't remember if that actually affects the factory or not, but you, you get the point. Definitely the coal plant. So depending on the spawn that you have, this is really what's going to make it uh, as, you know, what's really going to give you your decision as to whether or not you want to build Machu Picchu is how effectively you can utilize this second ability. And now it is then time to give Machu Picchu its wonder writing. So if you are new to the series, what I do is I give each wonder a writing on a 1 to 5 scale, with 1 being the worst and 5 being the best. And then I'm also going to give uh, go over some use cases for when you would want to build the wonder and talk about how difficult it is to build and how consistent it is across the game. So let's go ahead and give the overall rating to Machu Picchu, and I think that it deserves a 4. Machu Picchu definitely has some instances in which it can give you insanely strong yield bonus to a number of different districts. So as I mentioned, this is particularly useful on civilizations that have mountain spawn biases, such as the Inca or the Mapuche or someone like that, where you're going to be having a lot of mountains around, or maybe you just might get lucky, and you'll be near a continent split, which tend to spawn uh, mountains in large groups, which in those cases, you can get so many extra yield bonuses on your commercial hub theater squares and industrial zones that then just stack up together throughout all of your cities to give you a massive yield bonus to your whole empire. So for that reason, I think that Machu Picchu is quite good and deserving of the four. 
As far as its use cases are concerned, there really is only one, and that's the one that I've already mentioned. That's the large district adjacency bonus boost. Um, I don't really know why you would ever want to build this wonder for anything other than that, because four gold per turn is definitely not worth 400 production. As far as its difficulty rating though, uh, this is where things get a little bit less good for Machu Picchu because I think it deserves a 5. It is a very difficult wonder to build on deity difficulty, so whenever Gathering Storm first came out, the Machu Picchu was really easy to build because the AI never built it for some reason. And then after, uh, what patch was it? It was some some sort of patch that came out. I can't remember if it was the, uh, the, the Antarctica Summer Update or one of those ones or maybe the one after that that came out um, in which they patched the AI a little bit, and then all of a sudden the AI really loved to build Machu Picchu, and now they will they will go for it in pretty much every game, so you have to be very diligent with building Machu Picchu, otherwise the AI are definitely going to build it before you. Also, as far as its consistency rating is concerned, uh, I think that it deserves a 2. It is not a very consistent wonder, just because you are heavily relying on your spawn bias to get a lot of mountains, and you're also relying on those mountains being clumped together in ways that will give you high district adjacency bonuses. And the other unfortunate thing with Machu Picchu is that for every, you know, say for every theater square that you put down in a spot that is adjacent to a lot of mountains, you're sacrificing a spot that you could have put a campus or you could have put a commercial hub. So there's only a limited number of space for all these districts. So although it provides these additional adjacency bonuses to three districts, you're kind of limited in how much you can actually use that because obviously there's going to be a limited, there's going to be a finite number of tiles that have these high adjacencies. So for those reasons, I think it deserves the two inconsistency. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.